As you all know, music is a powerful thing in games, but what if music was literal power? What if music was a form of magic? And that, my friends, is what Loom is about. So go ahead, ask me about Loom. Anyone? Hello? Alright then, time for plan B. Howdy. Caddy. Ask me about Loom. Okay then. Is it a game? Aye. And is it fun? Aye. Are you actually listening? Aye. So what's Loom about then? Aye. Bugger off! Aye. Loom, the neglected child of LucasArts on the Scum Adventure Game Engine. This game was released in 1990 and it faced stiff competition from the likes of The Secret of Monkey Island and King's Quest V. This unfortunately caused the game's overshadowing and eventual fall into obscurity. So let's try and bring back these suppressed memories to the general population, shall we? Well that's atmospheric, I like. So right off the bat, I'm confused. I would explain, but you can just watch this clip and you will understand. Rise, son of Signa. It is the dawn of your 17th year. The elders await you in the sanctuary. It's one of those games which invents a new universe and throws you in without any prior explanation of lore. I always find this is quite risky in games, but it didn't leave me bewildered like Zanzan did. So, from what I gather, you play as an albino Jawa by the name of Bobbin Threadbear. He just turned 17, and Navi over here tells you you need to go visit the Elders. This game doesn't give you any directions for the Elders, so I just wandered around and found a forest, some seagulls, and tents. Unless these seagulls are the Elders, then I don't really know where the hell to go. I mean, the tents don't really have anything interesting in them. Oh. Hold on, how does this place fit in a tent? It's witchcraft, I tell you! Burn them at the stake, I say! We arrive at the Elder's place, where they are scolding an old lady. Something about disgrace or whatever, I don't honestly know. But they turn her into an egg. If you think about it, that's a kind of brutal punishment. Suddenly, swans attack. Swans? Swans! You know... Birds! No, 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 I'm serious! And the elders think it's your fault! That's one hell of a misunderstanding there! Okay, we're in control again! This egg is like, singing to me? Apparently, it's trying to open. Okay, so maybe I have to take this staff? Ah, it seems that the notes the egg makes need to be replicated on the staff. This game's puzzles are reliant on these spells known as drafts, as they call them in-game, and you are required to learn several different types in order to advance. They present these drafts as making music with a combination of four randomised notes, and you know what? It feels kind of magical. And as you all know, I am a musical genius. Anyway, by using the draft ECED, I opened the egg. This combination of notes is known simply as the open draft. What's interesting about this is that you can play these backwards to reverse the effects of particular drafts. Upon opening the egg, a little black bird popped out. Turns out this bird is the old lady from earlier, and she can talk in this new form. There's my boy. What's happening? It's... it's bizarre. What else can I say? Whatever. She explains the situation and then departs, leaving you to go on your own merry way. 
Everybody's gone and I still don't understand what's going on. <laughs> you said it, buddy. The first part of this game has you doing random tasks and ruining people's hard work by learning and undoing all the drafts they have done. These can range from removing die by reversing the die spell to turning gold to straw by reversing the straw to gold spell. Ain't I a tinker? After learning more spells, I decided to temporarily rip apart the fabric of the universe by opening the sky. Why did I do this? Well, a gravestone told me to, obviously. By doing this, I destroyed a tree, which subsequently fell in the sea. Hey, that rhymes. Now it's a perfect raft. <laughs> Someone should have told Tom Hanks about this trick. There's something I noticed about this game rather quickly. Just listen. That's right, the entire game is musically sparse and has no ambient sounds whatsoever. This results in the game feeling empty. Perhaps this was intentional, or perhaps it was just a limitation issue, but either way, I don't really like it. This is only really a minor issue though. So then I reach a water spout? Well, uh, okay then, and it teaches me the twist spell. I think that's close enough. Normally, I would agree with that, but I'm curious. <laughs> what? That is the stupidest scream I have ever heard. Not only does this sound ridiculous, but they play the same scream noise twice in a row? What? It's a rare case when a game does something so silly that it makes me laugh out loud. But Loom succeeded. I applaud you, Loom. In fact, have an entire audience applause. You deserve it. Anyway, you tackle this obstacle by reversing the twist spell, because, you know, there was no other way around it. I gotta hand it to LucasArts, they truly created something unique here. The gameplay is original, and the atmosphere is simply bizarre, and I mean, come on now, in what other game do Scottish people materialise out of nowhere and start mocking you? Thought you were going to fleece some shepherds, did ya? Maybe we ought to take the shears to you and st Hmm, I think some of the voice lines are broken in this. They cut off too early sometimes, and even though the voice acting is nice, and much better than that of King's Quest V in both terms of delivery and quality, this early cutoff is really distracting. Didn't know there were so many owls in these woods. Grass green, I hate that colour. Oh look, is that N Cortex? No wait, it's just a bishop. They're kinda similar, I guess. So, the majority of the game is pretty much just going around, completing random tasks by learning and casting spells, and talking to random people. Now, this might sound repetitive, but the game pulls it off quite nicely, in fact. The puzzles can be fun, but they're not particularly challenging. Did you know? There was vague interest for Loom to be a trilogy, and this is clear in-game. You were introduced to a character called Rusty Nailbender, who could have been the star of a game called Forged, set in the same universe. Another character you meet is Fleece Firmflanks, who is planned to be the protagonist of a game called The Fold, which would wrap up the entire story. However, the games were never made due to lack of interest by both Brian Moriarty and the LucasArts developers. How to ruin a dragon's day in five easy steps. Step one, get captured by a dragon who sounds mysteriously like an old lady. Well, what have we here? Step two, turn all of its gold into straw. Step three, send the dragon to sleep, making it subconsciously breathe fire. Step four, watch all the straw burn, thus destroying all the gold. Step five, revel in your douchebaggery. Later, we are introduced to the villain of this game, known only as Chaos, who was brought forth by that bishop guy from earlier. No worries everyone, the bishop gets rewarded. Oh, whoops, um, never mind then. As a result of Chaos being brought forth, holes in the universe were ripped open, and it's up to dear old Bobbin over here to solve this problem. This is close to the end of the game, so I'm not spoiling anything else for you. You'll have to play it yourself. 
and if I can say one thing, I'll say that there is a cliffhanger ending. Now let me tell you straight, this is a good game, and it's incredibly impressive for a 1990 release. The story of this game is very interesting and is, in fact, very well written. The characters are quirky and memorable, the plot is unique, and the ideas behind the lore are simply fascinating. The music-based gameplay is fun and interesting, and heck, there are so many spells which you either have to learn or write down. I had a pen and paper with me the entire time when I played this. And that, my friends, is Loom. It's a shame they didn't make the two sequels they had planned. I'm sure it would have been a marvellous series overall. I highly recommend this game to any adventure game fan. <laughs> Just anybody, it's great. Yeah, it is a little short, but I think that's one of the things that makes it better. If it went on any longer, it would have been repetitive, and we don't want that now, do we? To put simply, this game is short and sweet, and I think it's pretty good.